Welcome to WSB TV's Access Atlanta, your source for local things to do, weekend events, travel destinations, and so much more. Watch and discover how to make the most of your weekend. Welcome to Access Atlanta's Holiday Edition. I'm Brittany Tenenbaum. There is so much to do in Atlanta over the holiday season, and we're giving you the inside scoop. Santa's Fantastical is a little bit of art, a little bit of technology, and a whole lot of nostalgia. Some people call it a micro theme park. There's a lot to do here. We have live performances, we have themed food and drinks, we have Instagram vignettes, we have costume characters. We have all kind of fun things for the family. Lots of long walks and lots of long talks. Just kind of thinking through the creative process, we wanted to imagine a place, a new place that people could go besides a mall where they're going to wait in line for three hours. What could we do where people could come and have fun and not wait in line to see Santa? We've added um, an adult only, 21 and over, a place called Santa's Secret Stash. So we'll have some really cool seasonal cocktails. Santa! I'm going to have a Santa sangria. Sugar Plum Santa Sangria. Mmm, delicious and strong. My favorite room is the Gingerbread Dream House. It's like what would happen when you actually go inside a gingerbread house? The cake, the, the couch would be made of cake. There would be an ice cream, a sandwich ottoman, like all of these elements. Like what's inside a gingerbread house? That's what I wanted to explore, so that is absolutely my favorite new installation this year. Santa's Fantastical is great for girl groups. We saw a lot of girl groups last year and um, Christmas parties. We saw a lot of date nights and a lot of families. So really across the board, we've got everyone from all walks of life coming to see us at Santa's Fantastical. If you're looking to get into the holiday spirit, you're going to want to come here to the Atlanta Botanical Gardens. It may not look like much right now, but when the sun goes down, the lights turn on. A lot of lights, a lot of trees, a lot of just people having fun. 1,600 strands of more than 70,000 color changing LED lights hang above the canopy walk choreographed to all new music. This is one of those things that I can tell you how great it is, but until you see it, you really won't understand. My favorite thing is mostly the lights. There's a lot of nature and stuff, and um, there's like a train. Trains on six different tracks can be seen chugging around before dark. You can also grab a s'more by the fire as the sun sets on another Atlanta afternoon. Then you can enjoy the lights more than two million of them. There is also a lady who you might see by the water fountain and she's all decorated and lights and she's pretty cool. Along with the earth goddess, the night would not be complete without carolers. And a partridge in a I think Holiday Lights is about people being together. It's about community. It's about multiple generations, you know, where do you get to go out and see the grandkids and the grandparents and the great grandparents all together? The Macy's Pink Pig is an icon in the Atlanta community and really serves as the official kickoff of the holiday season. We have over 80,000 riders that come every year. It's a beloved Atlanta tradition, and it's really fun for the whole family. You know, it's special that this tradition that started over 50 years ago at the richest downtown store grown to what it has become today. Thank you. A portion of the proceeds from each ride benefits our friends at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. And to date, Macy's has donated over $930,000 to children. I have four girls and I started the Pink Pig 12 years ago with my first daughter. My mom and I would go to Rich's and it was at the time where they had the Pink Pig outside the building and I just remember climbing into the cage and riding around and my mom would wait and it was just, it was a very exciting time 
for me just as a kid, and it was very special. My kids love it, and I love that I get to see them um, just be excited. So we come out every year, and it's just something very dear to us. Thank goodness Atlanta had back when I was little so that we can continue the tradition now. It's just so much fun to do it with my mom because it was her tradition when she was little, and I want to keep the tradition going. Get ready for all the fun, exciting holiday activities to do in Atlanta. First up, Snow Mountain. Get ready to conquer the 400-foot snow-covered tubing hill and enjoy an enormous snowy play area. Get your thrills and chills on at Daredevil Plunge, the tallest, fastest slope ever. Tickets for adults and kids over three years old start at $34.95. Santa's Fantastical is here. The holiday destination is full of art, technology, and nostalgia. The season comes alive through interactive experiences, live performances, state-of-the-art technology, and Instagram-worthy moments. Tickets for kids 3 to 12 start at $19.95. Adults start at $24.95. Kids under two are free. It's time to experience Garden Lights Holiday Nights at the Atlanta Botanical Garden. Roast some moors and sip warm beverages while touring some of the popular garden sculptures like the Ice Goddess and Tunnel of Light. There's so much more with all new music and motion. Adult tickets start at $20 while kids 3 to 12 start at $17. Get your adrenaline fix at Snow Island as you tube on the 575-foot-long Parrot Mountain Slide. It's one of the fastest snow rides in North America. Take a spin on the ice rink, play in the snow, and enjoy a fun new scavenger hunt to find Santa. Ticket prices vary. Children two and under are free. Eight million lights, 15 dazzling scenes, and a magical night not to forget. The Fantasy and Lights exhibit at Callaway Gardens is one spectacular holiday light and sound show. Ticket prices vary. Now you have everything you need to make the most of your holidays in the ATL. Enjoy. Hello everyone and welcome to Volta, Cirque du Soleil's newest show here at Atlantic Station. I'm Heather Catlin. What you see on stage at Volta is absolutely electrifying, but the message behind the show is about what's inside, what makes us all different. Volta is the show that is taking Cirque du Soleil into a brand new direction. We have incorporated action sports and a super theatrical element to the show that follows the storyline of my character, Waz. The character starts off in a TV uh, reality show and he's extremely talented, but he has spent his whole life hiding his blue hair. He has blue feathers for hair. And that, in our show, is a metaphor for the thing that is different and the thing that we don't fully accept about ourselves. It's about self-acceptance and self-love for the things that make you different. So Waz goes on this journey to find himself and in finding himself, he meets the free spirits. And the free spirits are the people of the world. We know them and we see these people who are kind of careless when it comes to trying to conform to society's wants and needs. They're the comfortable people in the world who are okay with being themselves and love themselves for being the different person that they are. And they teach Waz to do the same thing for himself. And, you know, it's, it's a story of finding your free. Putting on nine to 10 shows a week involves stamina and motivation. The artistic director says, that falls on him. Uh, artists at Cirque du Soleil are not like uh, a lot of normal people. They're all overachievers, so you have to hold them back a little bit to make sure that they can manage eight, nine, ten shows a week. They're doing incredibly difficult and dangerous things on the stage. So, you know, there's days when we all feel fragile. We all feel human. We never feel at our best. We're never ready for anything. And so helping people get to that point where they feel that to deliver the performance that we need them to deliver is also part of it. Philippe and Mary Lee do hand to hand on the unicycle. They've been working together for eight years and say every night is a little different. Our act is the first image of Find You Free, we're the, fr the first free spirit act. It's like a very playful act, yeah. so we can play for real and we can talk to the public, we can play with them and have an interaction. So this is like 
if one day I want to do this interaction, I can do it and I can change it the next day and it's going to be totally different and which is very interesting for us. Other breathtaking acts, hair suspension, trampoline wall and of course BMX. I think it's a feel-good show. We have, you know, certain shows in our repertoire are darker, more dramatic, more theatrical. This is, this is just feel-good. You can enjoy all these amazing performances now through January 5th under Cirque du Soleil's Big Top here at Atlantic Station. Go to Cirque's website for more information and to buy tickets. Thank you so much for joining us on this backstage look at Volta. I'm Heather Catlin. What's an average weekend for you like? Sure, hitting the club or the bar can seem like a lot of fun, but how about switching it up? Don't worry, you don't have to scratch your head thinking of any ideas. We've got you covered. We're taking on galactic snow tubing at Stone Mountain Park. Tell us about galactic snow tubing. What is it? <laughs> well, welcome to Snow Mountain. Um, we are on the ramp here at Snow Mountain. It is snow tubing at Snow Mountain Park. And then we've taken snow tubing and turned it on, on its head and it's at night. We turn on 22 different LED lights and we have our lasers from our laser show. Plus we have a completely different remix of music at night. So the, the experience completely changes. Can you believe it? This is actually a full experience and it's pretty cold out here, but you don't need to bring anything that you don't have at home. You can bring gloves, maybe even a hat, but the key here is to bring water resistant clothing like some pants or even rain boots. But right now, it's time for us to hit the slopes. So it is finally time to go down the mountain. I see all the lights and the lasers are just coming back and forth and I'm about to slide down this mountain. All right, you ready to have some fun? Yes, I'm ready, I'm excited. All right, you ready? Yes. everything. The music was blasting, the lights were going, and as you go down, the ride gets faster and faster, and I wanted to do it again and again and again. So you know what? I'm going to go do it again. <laughs> if the walls of the stately Victorian mansion could talk, located in the heart of Cartersville Historic District, Roselawn is a grand home of architectural and spiritual significance. It was home to evangelist Samuel Porter Jones. Like a modern day Billy Graham, Jones's influence reached the masses, from everyday people to American presidents. Jones's calling came to him later in life. After alcoholism ended his law practice, it was his dad's dying words that changed him. He said, my poor, wicked, reckless, boy, you've broken the heart of your sweet wife and you're taking me down in sorrow to my grave. Promise me I'll meet you in heaven. And he began to weep and he said, I, I'll quit. The Jones family had roots at Rose Lawn until his wife Laura died in 1927. The home changed hands and its decline began. The once majestic home became an eyesore. Overgrown vines, the roses gone, and broken windows. Jones's yeah, great grandson well, remembers the ruin was, and the effort by Bartow County in the 1970s to purchase the home and bring it back to its original splendor. And um, the county was trying to raise the money to purchase the house. And I think it was like $75,000, which seems like a joke now. Every one of the 18 rooms displays family antiques and heirlooms, some even found by accident. I have naturally found an autograph book of um, one of his daughters, and her father had written to her, and also her mother, and um, so that was a very special find. 
Every year, the descendants of Sam Jones return here to Roselawn for a family reunion, but it's open for all to visit to make your own memories here. I'm Wendy Corona. You're watching Access Atlanta on the WSB Now app, your source for local things to do. I'm Justin Farmer at the old governor's mansion in Milledgeville. This is a state treasure and a national landmark, and the holidays are a great time to visit. This was the official residence of eight Georgia governors from 1839 till 1868. The original keys still unlock the front door. I want to welcome you to the old governor's mansion. Thank you. Curator Matt Davis gave us a personal tour and history lesson. It took three years to build this mansion, and workers finished it in 1839. It is considered by architectural historians to be one of the finest examples of high Greek revival style architecture in the United States today, as it's just a pure temple form on the exterior. The old governor's mansion is large, just shy of 22,000 square feet. From the outside, you don't see one of the biggest surprises inside. Wow. Look at this, the rotunda. Indeed, the dome that you see above you here is located 50 foot off the floor you're now standing on. And it's quite honestly one of the most significant architectural feature we have in the house. It is completely original to the building and that is all hand molded plaster that is gilded in 23 karat gold. Well, now it's unusual about this. That's, the, that's real gold. That is real gold, indeed. Wow. Now what's unusual about this dome is it is located below the roof line. You cannot see this dome from the outside of the house as this was meant to be the grand architectural surprise of the mansion. A 22 and a half foot tree stands in the rotunda during the holiday season. The tree is inspired by a Christmas carol by Charles Dickens. All the decorations in the home have been carefully researched and are true to the period. The Christmas season was just as important for people in the 19th century as it is for us today. Families came together and decorations were done. While some visitors come to see the holiday traditions, most want to learn about the mansion's rich Civil War history. The night Georgia seceded from the Union for the Governor's Mansion part, we know that Governor Brown gave a speech on the front steps of this building. And what was interesting, it was for a torchlight procession of militia and other parade groups that went by, but it was in a driving thunderstorm, which was very unusual for Georgia in January, which perhaps foreshadowed the very tumultuous years that we're about to get ourselves into in the state. In the private office, you see where Georgia's governor worked as the Civil War edge closer to the Capitol. The desk that we have here uh, is the original desk of Governor Joseph Brown. The desk. The desk. Okay. Commissioned in 1857 for his use by the state, the Civil War would be prosecuted from this desk. After Union troops burned Atlanta, they moved on to Milledgeville, Georgia's fourth capital city. General William T. Sherman captured the governor's mansion November 23, 1864, but he was in for a surprise. Prior to his arrival, Governor Brown had actually issued a proclamation to strip the house of everything, from the furniture to the draperies. Because he knew what was coming. He knew it was coming into this. Sherman met with his corps commanders in this room and finalized the plan for the capture of Savannah from the space. So in essence, you're standing where the first half of the March of the Sea ends and the second half begins from. General Sherman stayed just one night and left the empty mansion standing. The dining room where he slept has been fully restored. The original items here include this couch and something that belonged to a governor whose name you'll recognize. The set that you see here behind us here, the candlesticks and the decanter set, belong to Governor Howell Cobb. And this is a, kind of a little bit of a demon's moment, as Governor Cobb would be what we would call today a functioning alcoholic, quite honestly, right. as it was said of him that he was never away from the hard drink. 20% of the mansion's furniture and housewares are original. And so are 85% of the structure materials, like doors and molding. After Georgia legislators moved the state capital from Milledgeville to Atlanta, the mansion went through 20 years of transition. 1889, this became the founding building of what was then called Georgia Normal and Industrial College, which is now Georgia College. The college used the mansion for everything from dorm space to classrooms. College presidents lived in this home until 1987, when the home became a museum. The extensive restoration started in the 90s with years of research, planning, and construction. Here you stand 20-some years later. <laughs> right. Are you pleased? Yes, I'm very pleased, and I think it's uh, portrayed accurately. It is a museum house, truly a museum house, and I think putting uh, authentic things back in made such a difference. First time or repeat visitors to the mansion are always impressed. 
you never can see everything at the first time. So you come back and see a difference. In different seasons, they have different decorations here, and they're very beautiful. The old governor's mansions on the National Register of Historic Places, each room filled with memories and treasures that are part of Georgia history. It is so important, I think, that we do restore some of our country's heritage, and we keep these alive for people to visit, and they've done a beautiful, beautiful job. Curator Matt Davis says the mansion was a way for Georgia to showcase its growing wealth and importance in the 19th century, and today, this mansion is still a symbol. If there's one thing they remember nine months down the road about Milledgeville and the governor's mansion, what is the, the thing that puts this on the map? Quite honestly, for the state of Georgia, the governor's mansion is probably the most tangible symbol of, of the history of this time period and truly a reflection of how the state not only went through the high years of the antebellum period, but also transitioned into the recovery period after the Civil War. I think in terms of one singular fact about this house, the architectural significance and the history that happened here, stand where history took place. I'm Channel 2 Zach Klein. A holiday tradition is now visible high above Lenox Square. And if you missed any of the 72nd annual Macy's Great Tree Lighting, here's a look back at that magical night. Most wonderful time of the year, Leah Michelle. It's the most wonderful time of the year. With the kids jingle belling and everyone telling you'll be a good cheer. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And you can check out that tree now through January 7th. Happy holidays, everybody. Hey guys, Heather Catlin here at the Fox Theater. It's a great place to watch Broadway musicals, shows, and even movies. But today, we're gonna get a backstage tour. Let's go. All right, here we are. Hi, Jamie. Hey, Heather. Welcome to the Fox Theater. Thank you so much. We're so excited. We're so excited to have you. You want to get started, we'll go right into the soul of the theater. Ooh, from the bottom up. Here we go. So this is a door I've passed many, many times when attending a show, but I've never been inside. Can you guys please take a close look at this? It's a little bit freaky, I'm going to be honest. What we're looking at right here is the hospital room. And in the 20s, we actually had medical staff on staff so that if you had a stomach ache or, well, from the looks of that chair, needed a tooth extracted, you could uh, come down and uh, we'd take care of you. Don't get sick at the Fox Theater. This is real. People don't know, and you won't know unless you're on the behind the scenes tour, is the uh, secret entrance. So let's, let's take a look there. We're in the women's bathroom. <laughs> so you're technically not allowed in here, right? Technically, no, but... <laughs> <laughs> this is 1929 technology. There's no way these are still in use. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. But what we like to do, because we're a National Historic Landmark, we do like to retire in place. So this beast has been retired, but we still honor him. How crazy is this? Everything that was controlled by this 
is in this tiny locker is being controlled by this. And there's a good airflow to the Beyonce. <laughs> so now we find ourselves literally under the stage. We're looking at the pit. These screw jacks were put in in 1929. They're 89 years old, uh, they're, and they're the exact same ones we use today. Da, 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 da. So we're on, standing on the stage. We are looking out at 4,600 seats. Wow. You end up on the stage when you come here. We like to celebrate um, your, your final stay, that you have your own moment on this Fox stage. <laughs> Disney, call her. Call her. Okay, so now we're in the star dressing room. The very space that Prince stayed when he did his last concert. This was Prince's dressing room when he did his last concert here. This dressing room has seen all kinds of stars from Prince and Mariah Carey and Elton John and Elvis and Tony Bennett. That's um, awesome. All the Broadway stars. Um, hang out in here. So does so. it always look like this? Actually, no. We uh, made a lot of accommodations. We try to, you know, most of the time it looks like this, but we do have sometimes uh, Prince, we had, we replaced the carpet. When Prince was here, we put black carpet in. This is only between you and me. Mm -hmm. Weirdest thing you had to do here uh, to accommodate a star. <laughs> Probably, uh, Filling it with chiffon and feathers and beads. Chiffon so, yeah. and feathers. <laughs> yeah. And, we, and who was that again? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not giving that up, huh? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we could guess. <laughs> One of the greatest things about this space, and it's kind of happened organically, um, the Broadway stars that play here like to leave their mark, and um, all the Broadway actors that, play the, that stay in this room um, sign the drawers. When you take the behind the scenes tour, we always like to end the tour with a toast um, to all the stars that have played the Fox, to all the stars who are gonna play the Fox, and to everybody who takes the tour. To all of you. And feeling like a star. Feeling Cheers. like a star. Cheers. Uh, we're just gonna sit here and relax. Mm. Chat yeah. it up, you yeah. know. <laughs> with a Tony Bennett looking over our shoulder. Cheers again. Ah. And that's a wrap on Access Atlanta's Holiday Edition. You can check out Access Atlanta on our WSB Now app. Wishing you and your families a very happy holidays from Access Atlanta and WSB TV.